Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are so excited to have with us Zach Callison, Steven Universe, Sophia the First, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, just to name a few. You ready, Chuck? <laughs> the boy is on fire, yes. so let's get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Guys, our guest is amazing. You know him and love him from Steven Universe, Sophia the First. He is an award-winning TV, film, voice actor, and singer. We're so excited he's here. He's fabulous. And he is Zach Callison. We're going to get buzzed. He is fabulous. Zach! Hello. What's happening, dude? You know everything, what? Man. We ha well, we everything. Ha I love that. I'm here. Everything. <laughs> but we ha you know me. It's with the shoes that, you know. We gotta go with the boots, and I like how I kind of, you know, coordinated my Yeah, we're my very coordinated today. The I didn't French realize I know, that there dude, was gonna be really, all these like, really blue cool. accents in the background. I know, so, we had no idea. I could feel. Tell us a story of how you got those awesome kicks. Yes. Okay, so I was um, down on Melrose, and you know that funky part of town in Los yes. Angeles yes. with some buodies, and um, went into the Stock Martin store. I saw these on the shelf, and I wear Can't an eleven. Me your leg. Yeah. Suppose like a rockhead here. They, um, <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> getting my stretching in for the day. <laughs> there you go. They, Your hamstring's um, gonna feel it tomorrow. They were nines. I was like, okay. Well, I asked the clerk, "Do you guys have uh, have elevens?" He's like, "Oh no." Those so have been normally elevens. These were nines. Yeah. Yes. And I say, "Do you have an 11? He said, "No. Those have been on the shelves for two years. No, they fit nobody." Wow. I was like, oh man, that sucks. I start to walk out. Like, you know what? Why not? Let's try them on. Yeah. And they're a little snug, but I can wear them with right. socks. It's like a glass slipper. They only fit me. Right. And now they're, Custom. they're my babies. Fantastic. <laughs> so you don't have to use like any kind of petroleum <laughs> jelly to slip in there or anything like that? You're no, my, my foot is a little purple when it comes out. <laughs> like not this purple, like Mug, a little deeper. Like, so now, like after you wear them, like your foot's really skinny. Yeah, like you lose this weight is what on your Zach's foot. foot looks like. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's actually a closer time. It's more like a grape. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. my. Well, those are badass, dude. Well, just man. don't put Thank any you. weight so on cool. your feet. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, that's man, we're going to get right into it because the cool thing is that you're young, man. You're only like, what, 20 or you're going to be 20? 20 this year. I'm 19. Yeah, 20 this year. 19. 19 years old and you're killing it. Thank you. Thank you. You're killing it. It's so cool. So we're going to, we got a bunch of great questions for you, but we want to know first. So, um... You started out performing in your hometown mm -hmm. in uh, St. Louis, and when you were seven, right? Yeah. So, I, what was it that? What was the catalyst that got you to like come out to L.A. and 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 what was this whole seven-year-old thing? What did you do when you were seven? Uh, I watched a lot of baseball, played in the yard, and did theater. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't, you know, thinking back to it because I was seven. So when you're seven, time goes in slow motion, and it right. it felt like I did it for a long time in St. Louis. But See, it, I don't remember what it feels like <laughs> to be seven because it's been a while. In, in retrospect, it it moved pretty fast. Yeah. Um, but I did my first play, The Music Man, when I was seven, and yeah. my dad did it with me to sort of encourage me because my singing teacher had told me, "Hey, you should try this." The the college that she went to was auditioning and. I was kind of nervous. I, I had never been in an audition before, and my dad said, "If you audition, I'll audition." And he was wow. part of the ensemble. And what a cool dad! Yeah, no, he's always loved performing. That was that's where my yeah. performing gene comes from. Yeah. Uh, my mom will be the first to tell you that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that sort of escalated. I did a bunch of plays in St. Louis. I joined the St. Louis Muni uh, Muni Kids Ensemble, which yeah. is their big outdoor mm -hmm. amphitheater there. And then got an agent, booked a commercial, and then a small role in a movie, which. It ended up on the cutting room floor, but didn't matter. Sorry. I had a blast on set, yeah. and I, I was an eight-year-old at like one in the morning, way past my bedtime, just bouncing up and down. Mom, mom, That's I want to do this. Worth it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, "Well, they don't do this in Missouri." <laughs> so <laughs> we we sort of moved to LA to test the waters, and yeah. got a response that we didn't expect, and we sort of stayed here ever mm -hmm. since. So what was the response? Like, what happened? From agencies, um, yeah. a lot of you know kids' agencies were were interested. We we totally did it wrong. Um, the they always tell you like don't ever cold call agencies. Right. right. So we didn't exactly cold call them, but we we put you together. Warm called them. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we warmed up the room first. <laughs> uh, we sent out a package with a bunch of my headshots yeah. and yeah. and resumes out to the agencies, and then like two months later came out with a tape of a short film that I had done, but we didn't put it in the package. And we said, hey, mm -hmm. we sent a package out a couple months ago, and we just got these, and we wanted to 
add it to the package, and nine times out of ten, they're like, eh, just come on in, we'll give you a meeting. That's wow. a follow-up. It was not a, they followed exactly. up. Exactly. Follow-up follow up is key. A lot of people drop the ball on the follow-up. My dad is a salesman. He has oh, been his entire life. Go. and it Good genes. Yeah, yeah. I'm very fortunate for that. So, so cool, man. Did it the wrong way, totally <laughs> up and down, but it, it worked out, and yeah. we ended up moving here in 2007, end of that year. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. I love it. So, I mean, you've grown up in the entertainment business. Yeah. Because you also, you're fantastic, adorable on the Goldbergs. We've Thank seen you. In, in a lot of stuff on camera as well. So, what have been some pros and maybe even some cons for you having, I mean, you obviously have great parents and you have a good team around you. Right. Um, we have great agents. Um, but what have been some pros and some cons? Because obviously your childhood's been different than a normal kid. Absolutely. Um, as far as the pros go, I mean, it's it's given me a, a specific skill set that mm -hmm. I can take with me anywhere if I choose to do something else. I, I don't see myself leaving the business um, anytime remotely soon, right. Right. but a lot of my friends that have left the business and have gone on to do college or anything else, my best friend uh, is joining the Air Force. <laughs> have gone oh, on wow. to do college. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all eloquent speakers. They're all very intelligent. Um, because on top of school, we were also doing this heavy, intensive extracurricular as a career, yeah, right. uh, which was a great experience. Um, and my best friend, he's in military college, wants to be a fighter pilot, and yeah. totally different path, yeah. totally different yeah. lifestyle, but he loved it more, and he's taken the skills with yeah. him. As yeah. far as the cons go, I mean, it, it's a ton of pressure. Um, as a kid, I mean, my parents always told me, like, you have to... You have to be an adult on set, even though you're not. You can't goof around. You have to be a professional, and that's not something normally expected of people your age. So right. we understand that, but right. you have to do that. And you know, they they were good parents to me. I, I'm lucky with that. And yeah. they were, I meaning they're not anymore, or <laughs> they still are. Well, I'm an adult now, okay, so, it's, so we're more on equal footing. Yeah. <laughs> I have a little like that's seat it. at the negotiating like table. We were talking like you give <laughs> them you give them allowances now, yeah. right? Instead of them giving you the well, allowance. No, it's really I revoke cool. privileges <laughs> when at my leisure. No, I mean because I I've been performing since I was five years old, and so it's cool when mm. your parents support you, but then you cross into that other realm where you're friends too, and you're, you know, you still have that support, but they they, they grow with you, and so I think that's really great that you guys, because that doesn't always happen with right. kids who grow up in the business. They're oh, I've sometimes seen it. gets a little fractured, right? Yeah. Um, so, do you? What advice could you give to parents of kids that are passionate about performing? From you, from yeah, your that's a good question, man. Nobody's ever asked somebody like you that. Probably. Honestly, yeah. I mean, <laughs> mostly it's advice for people who want to become artists, which is yeah. great. I mean, I, I encourage art because I couldn't live without it. Yeah. Um, I think nurturing it is important, not forcing it. Um, yeah. It's because my parents, like, w whenever I was, like, slacking on an audition, like, they would get on me because, like, they knew that that is what I wanted to do. And I had expressed that so many times. When I got lazy, it was just because I was being lazy now because right. I actually didn't want to do it. Right. Um, it, it can't be forced. It absolutely can't be forced. That only ends in disaster. Um, I think, you know, as far as, you know, being in the industry, I think it requires um, a lot of vigilance. It really does. My yeah. parents were, they kept me safe from any sort of, you know, typical threats to child actors you would right. think of in the, in right. the entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, I've never really been um, ripped off by anyone or, you know, anything but you know treated poorly at the at the worst right. Um, right, right, verbally right. it's it's I was lucky in that respect with my parents because they were smart business smart importantly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's that's very much a big part of it so parents should know that the business is as much of a part if not more than the actual yeah, art yeah, itself. yeah. Love well, that. it's, it's so good to true. it's good to hear you say that mm -hmm. even as just you know you're freaking 19 and it's like well you no already but I know mean to learn that lesson at this, of, at this age is so important being, right you know, than waiting till later yeah and, and so many people don't focus on the business side of the business yeah. and they just think that's all about the art because um, it can be a drag for some people yeah. Um, yeah. and I, I'm doing a lot more of that now uh, started a company and you know working on my own projects and that's what I see myself doing alongside my own. Beautiful. Art in the Beautiful. future. We're going to talk more yes. about that. Absolutely. Sure. So you are on two super popular shows, quite a few, but but two especially: Steven Universe, you're Steven, mm -hmm. and Prince James and Sophia the First. Yes. Um, really cool because I love it because they're they're similar, but that yet they're really different characters. Um, so what uh, what's it like for you to be a part of that? cast and that culture of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, shows. those two giant shows, man. It's got to be pretty... 
yeah. Talk about it. Yeah, Sophia was was two years um, until I couldn't play an eight year old anymore. But I right. I loved being on that show. Um, you know, be, having the honor to play a Disney prince was incredible. Yeah. Um, and the the crew over there is really cool because they they don't treat it like they're making a kid's show. They're just making a quality show. Yeah. And that's that's what I respect about Craig Gerber and Jamie Kennedy and all those yeah. guys, Sam Regal. Mm -hmm. um, even though I, I couldn't be on the show anymore, I, I still have a good relationship and respect That it. puberty yeah. really reeks I know, it. right? It's like, yeah. darn it. There, there were a couple <laughs> gigs that I just, I couldn't manage anymore. And I knew it was coming and it yeah. came very late for me, for 15 sure. and yeah. a half. But that was that was a very stressful period for me as a voice actor. Yeah, because it, I can imagine. You know, I was still doing Steven Universe sessions at the time. And, right. Uh, Cartoon Network was, you know, totally cool with my voice changing because they were aging the character. But mm -hmm. it was, you know, voice was cracking left and right. And I'm an insecure high school kid yeah. <laughs> trying to figure everything else out. <laughs> And yeah. that was that was an interesting time. Yeah. How did I mean? Because you're also a singer, a great singer. But I Thank mean, you. how did you push through that? I mean, because that is, you know, because as people get older, then sometimes they get that I can't, you know, hit that. But I mean, right. that's a you can't ignore the puberty. Yeah. I I couldn't really sing like I could mm -hmm. before puberty. Immediately after, um, mm -hmm. and that that really hit me hard because that's I play the piano. Um, but my voice is my main instrument. It's the one that I can, you know, really go to town with improv. It's the one that I, I, I feel I have the most flexibility with in any situation. Right. And I felt like I'd lost it. Mm. And at that point, I wasn't really doing a lot of on-camera acting because I was at an awkward age. And it was, it was, it was tough mentally yeah. um, right. just to have that one thing that gives you joy taken away from you. But yeah. I, I ended up in my vocal studio, my vocal teacher studio, twice a week, mm -hmm. every week for a year, year and a half. And, you know grinded it out and now I'm I think I'm in a better place than I've ever been I was gonna say I mean those that those chords are muscles I mean so you probably that was such a one of those weird blessings that you don't recognize at the time yeah yeah you know trials and tribulations mm -hmm. build character um, so are you gonna grow out your hair and try and be like Jess Harnell <laughs> I want to grow up and be Jess right now, <laughs> and I don't know a single Harnell. person who does it. You definitely <laughs> want his career for sure, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. if anybody asks me who my favorite voice actor is or who my you know career inspiration is, it, Jess is really? the first well, answer. Yeah, that's was, cool, man. You also did Adventures in Odyssey, so wasn't he? That was your first gig. So wasn't he one of the first? established talent that you met. The first. Yeah. My very first voiceover session yeah. ever he was there. What a wow. great what um, a great inauguration. I was eleven years old and he was playing Maybury the Librarian. Um just a very <laughs> jovial, crazy character that you know yeah. he excels at. And right. um he just inspired me just watching him. I never thought I could do voiceover before that. And mm -hmm. we ended up running into each other in a lot of places. Mr. Peabody and Sherman, um Sophia the first, right. he's Cedric and yes. kills it. Yeah. And then, you know, just around around VO and around mm -hmm. the community and He's he's given me a lot of advice growing up career-wise, um, you know, saving my money and you know how yeah. to keep my wits about me and um, you know he's he's a great a great human being on top of That's all that. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool to have uh, somebody that 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 you know you aspire to be like that actually you get to meet and then mm -hmm. he actually does things to help you or says things right, to help right. you and this is one of the only industries in the world that that actually happens yeah. in yeah. which yeah. is really really cool. Um, so um, any any other shows that you have coming up that you can talk about that you're excited about or well just in the past was just add magic on Amazon. There's an on camera gig for me. Yeah. Um, which I got to play a villain for their whole season, which wow, was really that's cool. cool. Ooh, um, nice. That came out in January, and it's it's a fun show. It's it's also aimed at kids. It's about three yeah. girls who make magical cooking recipes, and hmm. I was this, uh, you know, slightly deranged, time traveling, uh, <laughs> terror slightly child. Slightly deranged, throwing yeah. salt Far from in the everything. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really, it was an NAN, no acting necessary, <laughs> as my teacher calls it. Yeah, just. Um, uh, just being naughty. Yeah. That's nice, though. It's a nice departure for you. Yeah, it's it's certainly the opposite of Stephen, uh, yeah. which was yeah. cool. Because Stephen, I mean, he promotes positivity, and he's very much a, a pure-hearted individual. And yeah. mm -hmm. to play someone who's real and flawed, um, as right. we find out later, but yeah. is totally the opposite of that, was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as other projects have coming out, I'm doing a lot of personal projects right now. Um, I just signed with Awesomeness TV to do a, a full YouTube channel. So I'm going to be putting oh, nice. like cover videos up there, um, doing some... Some fan interaction content, cool. as well as uh, a show that, at the time of this taping, I have not announced yet, but will be announced very soon. Nice. Um, we're doing a sketch show. Cool. Um, Beautiful. A full, 
full production. I hired a writing team um, and a team of actors. This is what you were set. talking earlier about, like doing it. your whole your new. Can you say yeah, that? Can you give venture. us the name of the YouTube channel so we can put that up? People can. Subscribe. It's just Zach Callison will be Zach the name Callison of the channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Subscribe. Um, <laughs> yeah, subscribe. Well, you know what? And, I and the mean, show will live there. It's, Beautiful. It's awesome, and what I mean, producing your own content is king, and it mm -hmm. is the now and the future, and so it's so great that you're constantly being creative and not waiting for other people to create the opportunities for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's something I never thought I would see myself doing. Mm -hmm. I, I have a background in comedy because I've been auditioning for that and training in that for years, but right. not specifically sketch. But I've hired a team of people that are you know well-versed in sketch and are passionate about it and are passionate about the project because we have an opportunity where we're not really beholden to any network or you know right, creative yeah. oversight, yes. so we can do whatever we want, and we're going exactly. a little nuts with it, and you're for better go or for nuts worse. With it. Nice, that's beautiful, but it's, well, it's fun, man. When you, that's we'll so have great. you back, and you can. That sounds great. A... Well, listen, obviously, so and and, and when you're so, uh, this is for them really, because I want them to, to learn a little bit of your process. Obviously, when you've gotten any of the gigs that you've gotten, they didn't just call you and say, "Hey, you want to do it?" You auditioned for it, right? Yeah, and like. 97 times out of 100 for okay. anything major, so yeah. So do you audition from home or do you go to, do you, do you do it at your agents? How does that normally work for you? A mix of both. If I have a ton that had piled up in a week and I want some oversight yeah. from one of our booth directors mm -hmm. that I trust, I go in and I record them there. Okay. Because yeah. um, I also, if I record them in my closet in my studio, I, I become... You know, mad perfectionist. I spend yep. like an hour on each one, and it's, <laughs> it's just a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so are yeah. You a, are you a harsh critic about your work? Absolutely, it's yeah. my my greatest strength and my biggest weakness. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very much a perfectionist. So do you have you actually booked something from auditioning from home rather than? Going in, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, good, because that leads me to this question right here. <laughs> yeah, um, if you said no, we go Thank to another. Thank you for taking question. the bait. Uh, <laughs> He's like, no. Yeah. I'm glad to be of service. <laughs> yeah, glad to be of service. Thank you very much. It's a science now experiment. This is right going here so is gonna, well. I'm so happy. Uh, so, so this is good. So, this audition came in. And you, we didn't even need to tell us what it was, but an audition, this audition came, or you can tell us. This audition comes in. What is your process like when you look at an audition, like? Maybe it's for a character or whatever it might be. How do you process it and give it the read that you wanted? And what is it about it that gets you to say, okay, it's good enough, now I'm gonna send it in? I play for a while. Just I, Sometimes I, I skip the character description for the first few takes. I, I just look at the picture mm -hmm. and I read the script once through and then I just do runs of it. Um, and sometimes I go back and pick up individual lines. And if, you do know, you there's read specific... only your lines or even other the ca other characters as well to get you into your line? I mean, I read them just so I know the context. Sometimes right. I will say another character's line and then follow it with my line just right. to really, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, get the realistic read out of it. It's voiceover is often done solo, but yep. acting is reacting, and voiceover is not any different in that right, respect. Right. Um, even though it's it's very easy say to that again because that was good. Mm -hmm. Write this yeah. down, you guys. Yeah. Making right. T-shirts. Acting. Acting is reacting. And voiceover is, is done solo. No yeah, but acting is reacting. Yes, and, and voiceover is that. the same. Yes. you can't allow yourself to be isolated even when you're in an isolation booth. Totally. Right. right. That's another great one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't allow yourself to be isolated. Confuci like I'm channeling my Confucius today. Booth. Okay, wait a minute. He's a fortune Give cookie. Give us one he, more, Zach. Zach Say something witty. <laughs> Say something witty. <laughs> he's the human fortune cookie. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's all we have with Zach Callison. We'll be back next week with part two, so stick around. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, please, and thank you. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always have, have time for a little buzz. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time, and remember, you always have time for a little buzz.